Well, it has been a rainy, rainy, what is it, three, four days now? And, uh, haven't really got much done, except I did, yesterday I cut some, cut a pretty good load of firewood. Uh, had to take care of the animals, obviously. Which, someone said the other day, they said, I just want to buy a farm and have a bunch of animals and I think it'd be so neat, but you have to remember, if it's torrential downpour, horizontal rain, negative 10 degrees, you still have to take care of your animals every day. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I encourage everyone to farm, but or have animals, but some days it's not easy. All right, well, the incinerator looks good. So, uh, let's see. Well, let's go take care of the pigs. Here we go. So I wanted to show you this. So here's our, this is the, the spring that opened up right here on our ditch. You can see it's, flowing pretty good and it's just got everything down here a muddy mess so Dan the excavator thinks he hit a weeping towel uh, so he's, we're gonna dig that back up in the spring and see if we can get that fixed because I do not want all this water down in here all the time which I don't really mind walking through it so much but here where we back into the the shed to unload hay and stuff, you can see it's just a stinking muddy mess. So hopefully we'll get that fixed and that'll help clear that up. The cows are over here. They're all sleeping. Hi guys. They've had their grain and they had their hay this morning, so they're... They're just resting. There's Mr. Bull. There's old 75. Man, they are big. So we're butchering them. Uh, today's Friday, so not this weekend, but next weekend. We're gonna... We're gonna get them killed and halved, and then we'll let them hang for two weeks. So that should take, we should be able to do that today. We'll get them killed and halved, get the scaffolding set up to hang them on and get some things organized. Should be good to go. All right, well, let's go in the shed here. We'll get the pig feed and stuff ready. Yeah, it finally quit raining. Well, for the most part, uh, yesterday evening, we still got some, a few drizzly, drizzly rain, a little bit of drizzly rain, but it wasn't too bad. I know the pigs are going to need water, too. We'll have to do that. That new, uh, Peg water, I mean, was a good choice because now we only have to water once a day. Now we're gonna we're gonna butcher the pigs. Uh, would be the second weekend in February. All right. 
So take these out. Now the pegs are, let me see if I can show you here. They're clean, clean out there. So I've been just carting everything over on the four-wheeler. Saves me some walking. Oddly enough, these five-gallon buckets sit in there just perfect. My wife and I were talking yesterday. You know, usually before winter and after winter there, we call it mud season. We have mud season. Well, uh, but usually it freezes up enough that we don't have so much mud. But it just ain't freezing up yet. All right, let's get this thing started. Turn this on. I lost this. There's a there's a little screw in the bottom of my my choke. Gosh darn it! So I gotta hold it with my hold it with my finger. I think old 75 there thinks they're going to get green, but they're not. Guys, Tina already greened them this morning, so... They're not getting any extra green. Now, I've been taking over a few slices of hay. That's the other thing. So that took probably, well, probably close to an hour till we got everything done. Just going over and getting hay for the horse and the cows and the pigs, so. So there's about three or four slices Now something else is important, which you can see I got can, 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 barrel, 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 barrel. But this is what's left over the chicken mash that I couldn't fit in the container. This is the beef grain bag that I have open. And then this is the extra beef grain, grain bag that I have open. But I need to get some more containers here to keep feeding because the... The mice just chew everything up and then your bags are all leaking out all over the place so if you're gonna get animals and you're gonna get feed you gotta have a place to store your feed that the mice can't get into it all right here we go all right you got you set up on the floor will it
and I'll take you over here and give you a close up there. <laughs> they were all in there sound asleep. They barely fit. But they're in there nice and tight, which keeps them. I gotta pan out here. They're in there nice and tight, but that keeps them nice and warm. You can't see it in the camera, but there's actually steam coming out of there from all the heat. But you keep a good base layer of straw or hay down for them, and uh, that insulates them against the ground, and they can stay warm. They got plenty of fat on them. They all look really good. They're all filling out really nice. All right, I'm going to set you back up on the floor while we're here so I can fill up the feeder. There we go. One of these days I'll get a camera, a good camera and a tripod that I can... Touch that bench, she's hotter than a firecracker. Now, one thing that come up in the, in the comments is about the feeder. So, that's just a two, two lid, two whatever feeder. And it does just fine with these seven hogs. They just take turns and they all get their fill. And yes, there is like that one out there is the runt. So... They have to take turns, and that's what they do. But they all get their chance to fill up their bellies, and when mama's in, mama pig's in there, she runs the feeder. No one else is allowed in there. Sometimes she lets them in there, but not very often. But that's just the way it is here. Since they're all out, I'll show you. So you can see the hay I just the hay I just threw in there, and you don't have to worry about spreading it. They'll spread it for you. But there's a good layer of hay down in there, and that's a thermal barrier against the cold coming out of the ground. They can stay plenty warm. Plus, this is this opening is facing south, so when the sun comes around, it shines right in there. And uh, most of our our weather and wind comes this way, so. They're blocked, the pen blocks the wind, they get the sun, and uh, they stay they stay nice and cozy in there. So, All right, well, I got to take my gloves off again. Sorry about the shaking, but I got to take my gloves off. All right, here we go. All right, and I stopped here. I got to hook up the hoses. You remember, I told you they were going to need water. Well, you can see, let me zoom in with my phone here. You can see they're standing there waiting. So I'll get all the hoses hooked up here. I got probably three, four hundred feet of hose hooked up to get out to where they're at. They're at they're out at the 
the furthest point of the paddocks now, so it's a little further. It's a little further stretch to get to them. All right, I'm gonna have to set you guys down here somewhere. Well, let's just set you right, right here. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, come on. How about right there? Nope. All right, that's good. All right, we'll get this one. For some reason, this one's kind of hard to start sometimes. All right, that one's done. Let's go over here. It's definitely gonna, definitely getting colder. This front's blowing out that we just got all the rain from the last three days, so. It's supposed to get, get cold again. Stay there, don't fall over. Good. All right, over to the shed. Here we go. All right, now we got water. Now, something to think about. If you're going to do a small hobby farm or homestead or whatever, and you put, you put some infrastructure in, now the sun's coming out. Uh, you have to remember when you put these buildings in, you're you're going to build the building up above ground level, and that's going to change your drainage. So you need to make sure that you have your drainage uh, flowing properly to shed water. Now, in that big mess of crap over there, we're getting ready to put a a garage up over there well we're gonna have to raise that up and you can kind of see okay so the camera's level but the ground slopes this way so when we build that platform in there we're gonna have to make sure that we get rid of the water yeah just look at this appropriately I've been trying to open this up so it drains as good as possible But drainage is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Uh, and any, any, uh, any good excavator will be able to help you with that. Um, if you if you're doing it on your own, there's really the only way you can do it is just to get a transit. Um, they're not real hard to learn how to use and uh, start shooting some grades and see which way your grades going and if you're flat you don't need a lot of grade to get rid of water but you, you got to have a little bit all right let's see here yep she's running good you can see they're waiting for me. Now yesterday evening when I checked this, there, one of these was still full. And uh, I was cutting firewood, so I decided just to let it go till this morning. And believe it or not, I just cleaned these things out, but... The pig's root, they get so much dirt on their nose and stuff that they they just dirty up the water pretty quick, so. You want me to fill that one first? We can fill that one first. Let's see, these ones are coming now, too. That one's trying to drink. And listen... 
if they run out of water for a few hours, it it's not going to kill them. Pigs are pretty resilient. Here comes Mama. Of course, she's twice as tall as the other one, so she can she can get down in there and drink pretty easily. You're gonna have to take turns, that's just all there is to it. Man, those pigs look nice. Right there, yeah, that's a good idea. You can see how much bigger mama is compared to the these other ones that are what, uh, six, six, seven months old. She's so big. That's the other thing, they step in it. And their feet are all muddy. So what, they've been on this paddock uh, Thursday. So for about eight days now, I think. Well, you can see how it's kind of green over there and then this side's all muddied up so they started rooting on this side first. Now that little red pig there in the center of the screen, she's the runt, and she would catch up to the rest of these uh, if I give her enough time, but we'll see what she looks like come butchering day. I'd say she's, she's eh, probably 180 pounds, somewhere in that area. That barrow there, he's sniffing her, she's in heat. But he can't really do anything about that because we neutered all of them. Alright, well, I'm going to finish up watering the pigs here. And I'll save you from having to watch me do that. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Now I wanted you to see the pig here he's eating roots off of those weeds well now he's gonna quit but those that's what they do you can see them rooting up along there they eat those roots off the weeds and they're really high in minerals they're really good for your pigs I wanted to tell you, I was talking to my brother-in-law the other day. A lot of people in this area have uh, some sort of wood furnace, whether it be an outdoor boiler or uh, a wood stove inside or what, what have you. Anyway, so we were talking about uh, buying firewood, you know, and you guys see those big log trucks going down the road. Uh, not the tractor and trailer ones, uh, the long 53 footers, but the, just a regular log truck. And I used to buy those for 700 bucks delivered. And uh, he told me that they're not, it's now going for $1,500 a load, which because of the price of diesel and stuff that's it's just going up that much 
but that's just that's just crazy you know you can't it, at that point you know fifteen hundred dollars load depending on how long that would last you it's almost uh it's almost worth burning oil at that point but wood's a renewable resource so and there's <laughs> Oh my goodness, in Pennsylvania alone, there's there's enough dead firewood that it'll rot. It would rot. If everybody went out and started cutting today, it would still rot before we could cut it all. But luckily, I got a good pal down there from having my property timbered, so I'm pretty well set. But it took me about four hours to cut a load yesterday. That wasn't even a real big load. I was just on the, the half ton truck level with the bed, but anyway, it's not just oil that's going up. Firewood's going up too. See they all drank now, so they're they're happy. They're going out and eat grass, do some rooting. There we go. And there's the first load of scrap. They come out of that pile over there that's going to the scrap yard. You might as well get some money out of it. Make it worth your while. Heck, if you can get a hundred bucks, hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. You might as well get paid for it. All right. All right, well, I got the water shut off. I'm going to, it takes me about 10 minutes. I got to go drain all these hoses because I think it's going to get below freezing tonight. So you got to make sure your hoses are good and drained. Because the last thing you want to do is fight with, fight with frozen hoses. Because I, when my hoses freeze, I got to coil them up, take them up, throw them in the garage or the basement, let them unthaw, bring them back down here and then do everything. It's a, takes a lot of extra time so all right everybody god bless each and every one of you thanks for tuning in i appreciate y'all we'll see you on the next one here we go